Hello and thank you for visiting Lisa's Lair. I'm glad that you clicked on this video and I hope that you have um, enjoyed the videos on this channel for so far. If you have been on this channel several times, um, if you're brand new, welcome. Today's video is about headlines. It is a news discussion event that I used to have every single weekend and for several years I've had this discussion and then I stopped having um, the headlines discussions um, entirely and I got some messages in world about it and I just told them look I'm just postponing those events but I really didn't get into um, detail about it um, even though I did send a notice out to the actual group members but I wanted to make a video to talk a little bit about headlines the purpose of headlines and you know what the challenges have been uh, for hosting the event. Headlines is um, a news group and we track news throughout the world and they submit links to me about the articles that are compelling that they feel we should discuss. So that is what headlines is. It is a it's a news group, people who like to follow the news, people who are online looking at news of what's happening in different countries. Um, and the news can be about anything. It can be, you know, news about technology, technology, news about health, um, news about politics, news about um, class stratification, news about women's rights, news about, you know, gay rights. It could be any type of news in the world. We don't discuss celebrity news. We don't you know, discuss the reality show fodder, that type of thing. That's not really the purpose of headlines at all. Uh, but we do discuss all the other types of the news that's out there. And um, I think that it's a good thing to have a group of people who do that in the world and to get together. So when I initially thought about headlines, I thought about who would the members be? How would we recruit the members? What I didn't want is a click. So I wasn't really interested in just inviting people at Sims that I had frequented, Sims that I had visited, and, you know, just bring together just people who I know on the grid. Because everybody that you know isn't always in, interested in the same things that you are. Um, so I didn't want that to be the case. I wanted it to be open to just everybody on the grid who's really into news, who, who finds themselves, you know, online, keeping track of news throughout the world. Um, people who just naturally do that, you know, day to day. Um, so I thought, well, okay, so that means I'll just have to, you know, invite people to join who are interested, even if I don't happen to know them. So that's what I did. So it worked out pretty well. You know, I was inviting random people on the grid, just asking, hey, how are you doing? You know, I have this group. Are you interested? This is what we do. Some people were interested and some people were not, which is fine. Um, but that's what you have to do. If you're going to have a group, you have to make it open to everyone. You have to take the initiative and actually invite people and let them know about your group because there's really not a way, a centralized way in world for people to find out when a new group has has been formed. There is the um, Second Life calendar, but now they've changed it to that you can't even advertise your group event in the Second Life calendar without paying. Now, it's not a huge fee to pay, but I just feel that if Second Life is all about community, then we shouldn't have to pay to be people who contribute to community. And so their new rule um, last year about making everybody pay who wants to um, post their event on the in-world calendar really didn't sit well with me. So I decided I'm not going to be paying every week that to put out an announcement that my group is having an event. I'm not going to do it. So that was just my own choice. And I'm not saying that it was a lot of money um, to make an announcement. It's just the fact that they are charging people to do that when Second Life is alive because it's a community and because there are people who take the initiative to make it a community. So it's just pathetic that they now want to make those people pay to do what they require um, this platform to be in order to make money and to keep people coming back here. 
So anyway, that was just my thought about that. One resident had an event in World that was pretty popular, and that um, resident um, contacted me and sent me a message and saying, um, you probably shouldn't schedule your event when other discussion events are happening on the grid, because then people have to decide where to go. Well... When I got that message, I thought, number one, that is ridiculous. There are clubs going on in world. Nobody um, schedules the time of when their club is going to be open, if someone else's club is open, or if somebody else is having a party at their club at the same time on the grid. Nobody is doing that. There's no reason for me to decide I won't be having a discussion event if somebody else is having a discussion event on the grid. There are probably 50,000 residents in world at any particular time. So I just thought that was a ridiculous um message and the same person messaged me once just to say oh i just want to let you know i'm not attending your event i saw that you were having one and i sent the person back you're not in my group i never invited you to the event anyway but okay thanks for letting me know so that was that um but here's the other issue once the group was growing with members, I noticed some issues. A lot of people were not used to having a read ahead event. They were used to just kind of dropping in if they heard an event was going on or if they saw a notice about an event, just dropping in to see what everybody's talking about. But Headlines is a read ahead event. We send out four news articles the night before the actual event so that everybody has a chance to read the articles. It's our articles that take about one minute each, so they're not these long, involved, um, you know, articles, or nor are they academic type articles or anything like that. So they're articles that really, literally, every, anybody who gets the note card can open the note card, see the four articles, read them all. It will take them about five minutes. Now, if they aren't familiar with the issues in the article, then they may want to do their own research on their own, you know, and go online and look up some other articles and become, you know, get up to speed on the issue. If they want to, that's totally up to them to do. The other thing that I would do is I would always have a meet and greet before the actual event started, which took place a half hour before the event actually started. That's for two reasons. Number one, so that people could just come to um, the campfire, get comfortable, meet other people, kind of chit-chat with people because, you know, if they don't know people, maybe they just want to chit-chat for a little bit. It gives them the opportunity to do that. It also gives people the chance who had not read the article, who just were getting notices saying, hey, this event is happening tomorrow. Hey, here's the news articles we're going to discuss tomorrow. And I sent out several of those events, you know, the day um, prior to the event actually happening. But for those people to go, well, I'm just going to going to take the landmark, I'm just going to show up, and I'm going to sit and read these articles online during the meet and greet period. Well, you have a half hour to do that, and these articles only take about five minutes. So that was a, a, a point of the meet and greet. It's just kind of a casual atmosphere where people can kind of get to know each other. And for people who had not read the articles, it gives them a chance to show up if they want and just read the articles themselves online. So everyone would get probably five notices about the events before the actual event happens. So the night before, there are a couple notices, and then the day of the actual event, there's several ev there's several notices going out to the group, just letting them know, you know, again, what time the event is going to be. Please read before you arrive. This is a read event, head event. So I'd say every single person had gotten about five notices before the actual event happens, because that's just a courtesy. What would happen time and time again is that a lot of people would show up to the event. They had not read the articles. Um, of course, they had gotten the um, note card because the landmark was inside the note card that had all of the information. The people would show up. They hadn't read the articles. Well, if they haven't read the articles, then we really can't have a, a real discussion about the articles because people are just making kind of vague comments just to kind of BS their way. And for the people who took the time to actually read the articles and be familiar with the issues in the articles, it was kind of a waste of their time to be there and they would just leave. 
you know, after, you know, that became apparent to them. So that was one issue that we had to continually stress that this is a read ahead discussion. You can come a half hour before the event starts and read the articles while everybody's doing the meet and greet and just kind of getting to know each other if you wanted to. But, you know, it's best to just read the articles beforehand. So that would be an issue. Sometimes people who are members of the group would just TP people that they knew um, to the event because they thought, oh, there's not that many people here right now. Let me just TP my friends. Well, that's a distraction because this is a read ahead event. People need to be members. Membership is required. Everyone has to have read the article. So it doesn't do us, the rest of us, a favor, me as a host or any of the attendees who read the articles, for people to just randomly TP their friends um, to the event. So that happened a lot and that was an issue um, and then also as people who had just not prepared for a group discussion this discussion is in text not in voice some people would um, not know that when they arrived um, but they, they it is in text so they do have to be prepared to read text on the screen and also type and so because um, these issues happened repeatedly I just decided to postpone headlines events and I put the notice out to the group, look, we're going to stop having these events. We've had a lot of people showing up who had not read the events, who were TPing their friends to the events, and things like that. And it's unfortunate, but that um, well, I want to restart the group. I want to let everyone know what we're doing, what is required, and hopefully we'll have a different turnaround this time around. But... That is what Headlines is about. That's why I wanted to make this video to explain why um, the group was um, growing and having events every week and then the events just stopped. So please feel free to comment below. And if you're interested in joining the group, it's called Headlines. Go into your group search when you're in the world. Type in the word Headlines, a news discussion, and you will see the group.